where the matrix A is given in here. And the right hand side vector B is also given. Now it is not too difficult to prove that the matrix A here is, is symmetric positive definite based on my lecture I gave you earlier. So with this kind of data, how do we solve for the unknown vector x? OK. The first step is you remember phase one, we have to find out the factorized upper triangular matrix U. And like I told you before, the matrix U, we have to do it according to the so-called row by row fashion, which means we have to figure out all the unknown of the matrix U in row one first. And that involved with the term unknown U11, U12, and U13. Apply those formula that we developed earlier, we know there's a formula we can compute U11, U12, U13. Either you can use a formula or you can use the picture that I showed you earlier. Either way, you can calculate U11, U12, and U13, and they're showing here the final answer for U11, U12, and U13. So after you finished the row one of the factorized matrix U, we can go on to calculate the term U22, U23, and those are the unknown of row two of the factorized matrix U that you want to figure it out. Again, U22 is a diagonal term, so you have to use a formula that involved with the square root operation. U23 is an off diagonal term, so you just compute the nominator, like I said, and divide by U22 instead of taking the square root. And all the term on the right hand side is known, and therefore we can calculate it. The final answer for U22 is this, 1.225, and the value for U23 is that much. And lastly, the diagonal term U33, the diagonal term U33, we can calculate it based on the given formula or based on the picture that I showed you earlier. And when you substitute the numerical value, you will see the answer for U33 is equal to this much, 0 0.5774. So basically, this takes care of row 3 of the matrix U. So the final answer is you calculate row 1 first, and you get these three numbers. Then you calculate row number 2, you calculate these two numbers. Then you calculate row 3, you get this number. And that will help you to find out the factorized matrix U. That is the first phase, first step. After the first step is done, the second step is the so-called forward solution phase. In this step, basically, we say, I know the matrix U already. I just figured it out. U transpose equal to B. B is given. The vector B is given. So in the forward solution phase, the objective is to figure out the intermediate vector Y. In the long form, U transpose is this matrix right there, this U transpose. The unknown vector Y is here, the intermediate unknown vector. And the known vector B is given, is here. So clearly, from this matrix equation, we can look at the first equation first. And from the first equation, we can easily solve for the unknown y1, which is shown in the next slide right here from the first equation. We can solve for I the unknown y1. And then we can go back to the previous slide. You can look at the next equation, which is the second equation here. And from that second equation, we can solve for the unknown y2. And the formula we developed earlier is right there. That is the formula. And after you expand it and replacing by the numerical value, then you got the value of y2 is equal to 0 
4OA2. And then finally, you look at this equation, you look at the third equation, we can solve for the unknown Y3, as indicated by this formula here for Y3. And after substituting the numerical value in here, we can solve for the value of Y3. And that will conclude the phase two. Now, so to summarize it, at the end of phase one, we know the factorized matrix U. At the end of phase two, the forward solution phase, we know the intermediate vector Y. Now, the backward solution phase, the objective is to figure out the original unknown vector X. The matrix U, you already know it from the factorization step one is given right there. The intermediate vector y, we already figured out from the previous step number two forward solution phase. And therefore, the original unknown vector x can be solved very easily. However, because this is the backward solution phase, that means you have to look at the last equation first. So from the last equation, number three, the third equation, the last one, we can solve for x3. And that is done by using the formula that we developed earlier. And after substitute the numerical value for y3 equal to this much, and substitute the value of u3 3 equal to this much, we find out that x3 is equal to 1. So we solve for x3. After we solve for x3, then we look at the next equation, which is the second equation. And then from that second equation, we can solve for the unknown x2. And then after you solve for the unknown x2, you can look at the first equation. And from that first equation, you can solve for the unknown x1. And those detailed step is shown in here. X2. We can solve it by using this formula that we developed earlier. And after substituting the numerical value, we solve x2 equal to 1. After solving for x3, solving for x2, now we are ready to solve for x1. And after using this formula and substitute it by the numerical value, we see x1 equal to 1. And if you notice, by the way, when you calculate x3, there is no contribution from the summation term. When you calculate x2, this summation containing one product. When you calculate x1, this summation term containing two products. So the formula getting longer and longer. And therefore, the final solution is 1, 1, 1, which is the answer for x1, the answer for x2, and the answer for x3, the original unknown. And that concludes this lecture. How long is that? So this is the end of the lecture. This is the acknowledgement.